Hey guys, uh, Rudy back with another quick video on how to use functions and the uh, different kind of function uh, parameters we can have. Uh, so let's just start with a, a really basic function and sort of just go through the, the basics for now. Um, so this is my basic function, okay? We use the def keyword to define the, the function. Basic is the name of my function. And these three guys here, A, B, and C, are my three arguments at the moment, okay? Um, so what we can do is I am just going to write a really simple function for now that just takes the three arguments and just prints them all out so that we can sort of uh, have a bit of play around and see what's happening. Whoops. When I, um, when I run this code. So let's run my code here. Now I can call the basic function by chucking two brackets on the end of it. See, if I just put in basic, I get uh, Python's like, yep, that's a function, all right. But it doesn't actually run the function until I put the brackets on the end. Um, so I just pass it three things, one, two, three. And you can see that A got past the first thing. A is one. B got past the second thing. And C got past the third thing. Okay. So when I call uh, the function basic with one, two, three, like this, uh, there are a, a, the sort of implicit code that happens at the start in a, a way you can think about it is that it takes the first thing that I pass to it, in this case, a one, or over here, I suppose, a one, and it goes, yep, A is equal to one, B is equal to two, because that was the second thing, and C is equal to three, the third thing. And um, that means we can then reference A, B, and C within our code. And this is really nice, right? Because this means that we can pass different arguments to my code over and over again and uh, get similar results, but we don't have to keep writing out the same code over and over again. And we can instead use the function, right? So if I want to call it with three, four, five, or, you know, even with words and letters and that sort of thing, it'll all be, uh, it'll all be fine in that case. Um, so these things here are what are known as positional arguments, right? The position is important. If, if I change this and I put the two first and then the one, okay. A is now two, B is now one, and C is still three because it's the third thing. Okay, so that's important. These are positional arguments and the position you give them does matter. So you'll see the error message if I give it no arguments in this case. Basic, missing three required positional arguments. Okay, so what it's saying, A, B, and C, is that I need an A, B, and a C because these are all positional arguments. So in other words, you haven't given me the first, second, and third thing that I need for this function. And a similar sort of thing happens if we only give it two. Missing one required positional argument C. Uh, finally, the other way we can go about this is if I give it an extra positional argument, okay, so see that this is now the, the fourth position one. Basic takes three positional arguments, but four were given. Okay, so these are just sort of the basic error traps you can fall into with this. Okay, um, and this is purely using positional arguments. Now, these are the only kinds of arguments you guys are gonna need to do the first assignment, okay? Um, but for the purpose of keeping all this sort of knowledge in the same place, I'm now gonna move on to slightly more uh, intermediate use of functions here. Okay, so what have I done here? And for now, let's actually just copy paste this. What have I done here? I've got C equals three. So this is, uh, this is what's known as having a default value for my parameter here, or my, my argument. And what this actually allows us to do is omit putting in the third value here. And Python will go, okay, he hasn't put in the third value, let's give it a C. So just to show you what I'm talking about, if I now try and run my intermediate function with one, two, three, I should try and move this down. Whoops, I didn't put my close bracket in you can see that it's one, two, three. Okay, so C is still three. This works exactly the same as the last function. However, if I omit the C value, C is still magically three, okay? And we don't get the error message we got before when we didn't have the right number of arguments. So by supplying a default value, we can actually uh, not have to put in the C sometimes. So for instance, if you have a function where 95% of the time you always use one particular uh, argument with a default value, you can set it up like this with the equal sign in there, and then you don't have to put it in, okay? Now, 
since all of these um, positional arguments do have a name, okay, so this one's called A, this one's called B, and this one's called C, we can actually slightly change the way that we call these things. So if I put C equals four here, for instance, it knows that this thing is C. And so if I put C equals four, it knows to set it to four, okay? Um, but since this is still a positional argument, likewise, we can also just put a four there without the C and Python's smart enough to figure it out, okay? But I would encourage you not to use this style um, for dealing with these sort of arguments and instead to explicitly name them just because it makes it a bit clearer in your code uh, sort of what you're doing. Um, so one thing you do have to note is that you cannot put a default argument before a normal positional argument. So you'll see if I do this now, idle should hopefully yell at me. Yep, non-default argument follows default argument. So we can't have a non-default argument after default. So Python's fine with this, but it won't let me do, you know, something like that as well. Um, so that's sort of some of the, the cool stuff we can do with intermediate values there. And now the order on positional arguments does matter, but it doesn't matter if we have defaults up like this. So let's say I actually go ahead and give all of these guys defaults, okay? Now I can run intermediate and I can again give them all different values. So I can go 10, 20, 30. Okay, and it'll go, oh cool, A is 10, B is 20, C is 30. But what I can also do is say, okay, let's set C to be 50, B to be 20, and A to be 600. And Python's fine with that. Python will let me put these in the wrong order. Well, it, it will let me put them in any order because they are keywords, uh, or they are named parameters, I suppose is another way of putting it. Okay, and uh, as I was saying as well before, even when we're calling them, I can't do this because I've named a default value before a non-default value. Okay, so positional argument follows keyword argument. Python won't let me do this, but we can still put them all in in a random order and it'll still know that the C1 goes last. Well, not last, that, that, that the C1 is the C1 essentially. Okay, now, so the uh, the last thing I'm gonna show you is some of the slightly advanced stuff that we can do with our functions, okay? So this is slightly beyond the course, uh, course of the scope, course of the scope, scope of the course, um, but it's just something sort of nifty to know and for people looking to sort of get some of the advanced use out of functions, this is, uh, some of the, these are some of the options you have. So I can pass in an argument that has a star at the front of it, or I can I can set a parameter for my function that has a star at the front, okay? And if we look at what this is doing, this actually allows us to pass an unlimited number of positional arguments to my advanced function. So what do, what do I mean by that? Well, let's think about what happened before when we tried to call basic with too many arguments, okay? Uh, Python was like, nope, you only get three, but you've given me five, not gonna deal with it, okay? But using this star args guy, okay? If I run the same code with advanced now, one, two, three, four, five, you can see it's actually run. And more than run, I've been able to access the last two positional arguments, four and five, using this args guy, okay? So basically this sets up a sort of list um, in your function, okay, where you can then go through and loop over it afterwards and go, well, here's all my positional arguments, okay? Um, so something to note is that I still can't put positional arguments after named arguments, okay? And in general, what you'll actually probably see, well, actually, this, this is sort of 50-50, but you'll see uh, your positional arguments all first and then your named arguments all second, uh, just because that's the way that Python will let you call them, okay? Um, now, not only can I take an unlimited number of positional arguments, but Python will actually also let me take an unlimited number of named arguments, okay? And this is set up by using double star, okay? 
Now, quags and args, what you'll typically see, just standing for arguments and keyword arguments. Okay, um, but you can use whatever you want here. I would just encourage you to sort of stick with convention and, and stick with args and quags. Um, now, the quags guy, since it is supposed to be keeping track of keyword arguments, is actually a dictionary, okay, or a type of dictionary. So, uh, how am I going to print this? Um, quag plus, let's put a colon in. This should be fine. So if you're not familiar with dictionaries, um, like I said, we're at a, I'm sort of covering some fairly advanced stuff. So don't worry about this too much. Um, you, when you get to dictionaries, you can maybe come back and rewatch this and get your head around it. But if I call advanced now, there's my, my one, two, three. Okay, well, let's even set C equal to, to 50 or something. Now I can actually come back in here and start giving this extra keyword arguments. So E isn't a keyword argument. Um, e, uh, we can give it more. F, testy, okay? Now, when I run this now, we can see that it's printed A, B, and C as our normal prints do, okay? But then it's actually gone and started capturing these extra keyword arguments. And it's, it's stored them, it's gone cool. So D is, 30, okay? E is 60, 60, 90, and F is whatever, that, that number's too big for me. Test E is one. So we've actually been able to store all these positional arguments and keep track of them within our function, okay? So this can be really useful um, if you are running Python on the command line, okay? If these are terms that scare you, don't worry about it. Like I said, advanced usage. Um, but for those running Python on the command line, args in particular are something you'll get a lot. And Args and quags basically just allows us to make our functions a lot more modular in that sort of regard, right? We, we can, our function can, is really flexible and can take lots of things without sort of crashing, which is sometimes not what you want, but sometimes it is what you want. Um, other than that, I suppose the main thing to keep in track with, uh, to keep in mind when using these is just make sure you do all your positional arguments before you do any of your named arguments. Okay and that there are some pitfalls that you can run into here. So if I go four and I run that, that's fine. We get A, B, and C is 50, okay? Because I explicitly named C to be 50. And then we got uh, the extra positional arguments, three and four, okay? And then a whole bunch of other stuff out the back. Now this can get slightly confusing Okay, so for instance, if I have one, two, three, so this Python will be okay with this and it sets three to be the positional argument, okay? But if I happen to put C over here, right? In my function definition, then stuff can get a little bit dicey, okay? So because I've put C over here, C is technically um, a na uh, it's a positional argument. It's the third positional argument, right? Because it comes before the star args. So I can run into a bit of trouble by doing something like this, okay? Advance got multiple values for argument C. So because C is the third guy here, okay? It thinks, cool, C is three, but then it also gets an extra argument, C equals four. And so this is where you can sort of start to run into trouble. And that's why generally I would recommend for the most part, um, putting your all your positional parameters first, all your positional arguments first, and then all your keyword stuff. Because if we run this this way, Python can correctly interpret that C is four and that three is just an extra positional argument. Um, we're getting into really sort of niche stuff here. So I'm gonna wrap up the video for now, but basically, hopefully you guys are comfortable with this level of basic function use, okay? You will definitely start to see the intermediate function use in your second and third assignments and in some of the MyPies. And while we'll probably never get to advanced function use in this course, I want to say advanced, I'm just talking about the sort of the three things discussed here. Um, um, it's still useful to know about the possibilities. And then, you know, maybe one day you get to the part where you can start using uh, these sort of more advanced concepts in your function writing to start writing better, cleaner code. Um, but yeah, so that, that's all I've got to say, guys. And I will catch you all in the next video.